done the unboxing of the crate. Let's see what's inside this box here. It's dope. Reebok Forever Float Ride Grow. It's a completely plant-based running shoe. This is a idea that is just absolutely fantastic. I love this concept. What's in here? Look at that. So the entire shoe, the idea is that this entire shoe is plant-based. The upper is made from eucalyptus trees. The outsole is made from actual rubber trees, not petroleum-based rubber. So it's supposed to be more sustainable for the environment. And the midsole itself is also a plant-based midsole. It's grown from the castor bean. So, and they've done it in a sustainable way. So they're trying to minimize impact and create this beautiful plant-based midsole. Even the insole itself, which is here removable, this insole is made out of bloom algae. So the idea with this shoe is that it's not just a sustainable casual shoe, but it's supposed to be a sustainable performance running shoe. And I'm very excited. So let's go for a run. Seven point five seven miles, eight minutes, fifty three seconds per mile, one hundred and forty five beats per minute today. Going for my first run in a plant based shoe, the Reebok Float Ride Grow. This was a really interesting shoe, not only from the story behind the shoe, but in running in the shoe too. It's the first float ride that I've run in. Pretty exciting. But before I get into that, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review by Reebok. However, they're not paying me to make this video and I had to insist that they don't pay me to make this video. But I also had to insist that they don't get a chance to review any of my footage or my thoughts before this video goes up on YouTube. So with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about this plant-based shoe from Reebok. Uh, the shoe actually is meant to be a runnable shoe and here's how they're doing that. It kind of looks to me like burlap but it's a really soft material and the mesh that's up here is super stretchy so it actually ends up being a fairly comfortable shoe. Almost feeling like kind of like a thick knit shoe. It's very nice on the foot uh, especially on this tongue. Now normally I don't like padded tongues. I just pretty much don't like tongues at all. But this one I'm actually gravitating towards quite a bit. It's got that eucalyptus upper material on here and the way they've done it is really nice to touch. There's no padding in it, but the way, the way that the tongue is designed, when it sits on your foot, it's really comfortable and it's giving me very strong like Irish sweater vibes. So like with it being like harvest time now in the early fall, we've got this like earth tone shoe, the, the vine green laces and this super sweater tongue. It's just super comforting. It's like a bowl of soup on a rainy day. I just really like putting the shoe on. It's a really comfortable upper. The midsole is also plant-based as well, coming from the castor bean. So from the castor bean, they're able to extract an oil, castor oil, and they're able to use that oil instead of petroleum products to be able to make the midsole foam here. And the midsole is really good. Overall, this entire package, if I were to put it into a phrase, it's casual, but capable because this midsole really sings. Now I've not run in the regular float ride material before, so I can't compare it to that midsole, but running in this midsole, it was not that thick. It felt like it was pretty thin in terms of the amount of cushion I had. It was 16 and a half millimeters of stack height in the forefoot with a nine millimeter drop, bringing us to 25 millimeters of stack height in the rear. So, uh, 
kind of on the thinner side as far as midsole foams go, but it was a really bouncy material that also happened to absorb a lot of impact from whenever I took a step. So I'm actually really enjoying this midsole material. Now it's not the lightest material or maybe it's the upper that's a little bit heavy with the extra fat laces and the eucalyptus upper, but it, overall it comes in at 9.2 ounces as the stated weight for my size nine and it felt like a good weight for a daily trainer. And I felt like overall it felt lighter than the numbers might indicate. On foot, it feels a little bit lighter than it feels in hand. And in hand, it feels lighter than I think it looks. So overall, like the weight is distributed well, so it doesn't feel like a nine ounce plus shoe. Now, if I'm kind of compare this midsole foam for those of you who haven't tried Reebok's float ride midsole foam material before, at least the way that it feels in this float ride grow, I'd say the closest thing that it reminds me of, uh, I'm gonna compare it to two other kind of, I guess like sibling shoes or cousin shoes, because Reebok is owned by Adidas. So the two Adidas foams that I think that this feels the most com like comparable to is probably the Pulse Boost HD or the Boost HD that was in the Pulse Boost uh, HD shoe. Uh, except for this is a lot lighter and a little bit less dense than the Boost HD. And so I feel like you're getting uh, two benefits. Uh, you're getting a little bit more springiness to it and a, a little less weight to it as well. So an improvement, but pretty similar to that material. And because this shoe, in terms of the fit, I went with a size nine, which is my regular size. And I feel like that fit me in terms of the width of, of the toe box and everything in the heel and in the, in the top of the shoe. But it was really long and I feel like that's something that's been happening in, in a lot of Adidas shoes. The fit is the same, but the shoe's just like a little extra long in the toes for some reason. It doesn't really affect performance, it just looks longer. And that also makes me think about the old Pulse Boost, no, what was it called? It was the, the Adidas, what was it, something, something, DPR, but it was a deconstructed performance racer. Uh, it was a thin layer of boost without a torsion plane on it and a super minimal upper. I'm getting really strong vibes of reminding me of that shoe as well. And so I think that this shoe kind of fits between those two in terms of the way that this midsole material performs. I'm a big fan of it. It can also rise to the challenge of your daily training and even some of your harder workouts. I took this shoe on a couple of my hill surges on this route here, and there's two on this Vasky route that I normally do in this area. And one is about like four tenths of a mile. It's a pretty long sustained hill. Um, and so that's why it's like a weird number, not like a quarter mile or a half mile. It's like about 0.4 miles. And I was able to pick up the pace a little bit on that. It felt really good at that pace, very comfortable there. I didn't feel like it was heavy or bulky. I also didn't feel like this like comfortable and loose and like almost like floppy upper wasn't a problem at all. And even the heel flare wasn't a problem. I had felt like I was pretty locked in. There is a little bit of a heel counter. There's a little bit of structure back here. Uh, basically the way like this overlay goes, that's where like that extra structure is, but it's not super rigid, but there is some structure in there to help you stay locked in. I also took this on a much shorter, it's only like a 20 second long hill, but it's a lot steeper. And for that one, I because I know it's such a short hill, I took it up just basically as fast as I go up the hill. And again, the shoe feels really good. And that's a gravel hill and like the tread pattern on the outsole of this Reebok float ride grow. Did a great job of being able to give me good traction while I was trying to power up the hill. So I was really impressed with this shoe. I feel like this is a legit, running shoe if you didn't tell me that it was a plant-based shoe i wouldn't like know that it was a plant-based shoe and i feel like that's ultimately the goal right that's like how you know you've done it right is when you're not like well it's a good shoe for a plant-based shoe i feel like the reebok float ride go is a good shoe it also happens to be plant-based and i think that's pretty awesome so those are my thoughts on the reebok forever float ride grow. And uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet. I do a live stream every day at 3 p.m. Central Time. So feel free to come on by and ask some questions there. It's a lot easier for me to answer questions and kind of get more feedback from you uh, when you're in the live stream. And there's lots of other people there that are runners that love talking about running and sometimes not talking about running, but just hanging out. It's always a good time. So I'd love to see you guys there as well. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you 
the next one. Yo, what's going on?